Well, hi there. As you know, a little while back, Josh's frogs sent us these incredible neon day geckos. And you see, I have them set up currently in an enclosure very similar to what we built for morning geckos a while back. And it isn't because I think this is the ideal setup for neon day geckos. It is because they were escaping from this enclosure. And so today I'm gonna use all of the supplies that Josh's frog sent to us for these day geckos to build them a wonderful neon day gecko enclosure. And, and so I'm gonna, just gonna walk you through real quickly what we have. We have an Exoterra 18 by 12 by 12, I guess 12 by 12 by 18 uh, upright enclosure with front entry doors. This is a, a really good tank for these little geckos. Should be wonderful. We got the plants that they sent to us. We've got springtails and isopods. We've got some of their bio bedding, which this will be my first time using it, but it looks excellent. And it's kind of similar to the mix I tend to make for enclosures like this, but I dare say probably even better. Bamboo, which is really key for day geckos, especially these little yellow headed day geckos, because that is where they live. In fact, that's why their heads are yellow, because they're poking them out of the bamboo and it gives them a little camouflage. Uh, we've got some of their bioactive booster, which I'm really excited to use, and some of their cleanup crew cuisine, which, you know, these are gonna be really great for our calembola, our springtails, and our isopods. We've got UV bulb and a hood. This is, this is the Exoterra hood made for this enclosure. And we've got our combo thermometer. And so, let's get this show on the road. And I am so thrilled that they sent us all of these things to try out. Honestly, these are such amazing products and I'm really glad I get to share them with you guys and I'm really glad I get to try them out myself. This is a good day. I'm gonna start out by moving these guys actually kind of far away. I don't wanna bump them or anything. I will be using the plants shortly, but uh, they're gonna be kind of last thing. So we'll, we'll put them off to the side over by our little thing back here. A couple of things that, that I've noticed. So I did actually just keep the geckos in here in a non-bioactive setup for a few days when they first arrived. And as I mentioned, they got away a couple of times. Actually, just one of them. Thank goodness day geckos are so not shy and they kept showing up. The first time I thought it might be user error on my part. But the thing was, I could, I mean, I, I found the gecko before I knew the gecko was gone. And so I was able to check the tank and I couldn't see any way that I'd messed up putting the lid on or closing the doors or anything like that. But I thought maybe it's my user error. Next day, it was out again. And this time I did notice it was missing and I found it up in the light fixture. So fortunately it didn't go far and I was able to find it both times, but there was some way that they were getting out of this tank. And what I discovered was exactly what the flaw was. This tank is not really well designed for very, very small geckos. Up here at the top, it has a place for wires to come out, and they've actually got a really cool way to cover that up. I really like this, actually. I think it's a neat idea, which is they've got these sliders, and those sliders close, and they cover up those holes, which is good, because these day geckos would get right out of those holes. Well, the problem is there's another big hole right back here, and they can climb I noticed this later, they can climb into there while in the tank, especially when they sit on top of this backdrop, they can climb right into there and then out that hole. And there's no way to stop them. There's no way to stop them. So I will start with how I solved that little problem. So to solve that problem, and there'd be a lot of ways to deal with this, but I just put a little bit of expanding foam in here. Uh, I've got some of the black like gaps and cracks or, no, it's, I think it's the expanding foam that can get wet. We'll have a link to it down in the description. But I, I, I put a little of that in that hole that they first have to climb into and that should stop them. Uh, I wanna make sure you realize you shouldn't put tape across here or your geckos will end up in here and they'll essentially end up stuck to that tape like a fly trap. And these geckos, their skin can come off as an escape mechanism, they'll drop tails. It'll be horrendous. You, you would hate yourself for using tape. And so you don't wanna do anything like that, but that should stop them from being able to get out again. If I have any issues, I'll let you know. But that, that should fix the little problem with this Exoterra lid. The next thing 
that I want to talk about is this background. There's nothing really wrong with this background, especially once we convert it into a bioactive tank where we've got a, a drainage layer and soil down here. It's going to prevent them from being able to climb up behind it. But before they could climb up behind it because there are some places on the bottom for wires to come out and then come up the bottom. It wasn't really a problem, it's just a lot of times the geckos were back there and I was worried they wouldn't get back out. Um, and, and I like this backdrop okay. Uh, it's, it's perfectly serviceable, it's actually a, a great backdrop. But I decided that for this build, I'm not going to use it. I really prefer this kind of more naturalistic background. Uh, it is, you know, actual soil and actual sphagnum moss. And all the plants and stuff can grow on that a lot more easily. If you want to see how to do this backdrop, we actually have a whole video and that's pretty much what it was about is how to do this backdrop and we'll link that right there. So you can check that out, but I'm going to skip that step. The only thing I did differently in today's build is I didn't include any wood in that background. I just used the soil, sand and sphagnum mix. But the reason for that is because we're going to have the bamboo in here and I thought that was the look I really wanted. So. I've got that backdrop. That's the backdrop I'm going to go with. I got my lid fixed and now we're actually going to start out uh, doing something that we, we don't have the materials here to do. So this is really good stuff. I love all of it. I'm really excited to use it and I'm going to set it aside for just a minute and we're going to do a false bottom in this enclosure. This is a drainage layer and, and this is going to keep our soil from rotting. Our plant roots are going to stay aerated better. They're not going to rot out. This tank is just going to last a lot longer because we did a drainage layer. And this is actually something that we didn't do in our, in our first build, the one where we did the backdrop. That was more just about how to do the backdrop. Today we're going to talk about how to do a drainage layer and then we'll do the rest of the, the build specifically for the neon day geckos. All right. So for this drainage layer, the first thing we're going to need are hydro balls. Okay, you can also use gravel. Um, gravel's a little bit cheaper. Hydro balls are probably a little bit nicer. And, and so I'm gonna go with these for today. So we'll just put maybe about an inch or so of hydro balls in here. This is just gonna give somewhere for the water to go because you'll be misting and watering your plants. It'll give the water some place to go where it doesn't uh, have to just sit and soak your soil all the time. Your soil should be able to dry out a little bit and that water's got to have somewhere to go. There are our hydro balls. Okay. It's not a real complicated step. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of screen. This is just like nylon screen. I bought a big roll of it years ago and I've been using it for all kinds of tanks. So I cut this to one foot by one foot so that I could put it in here. Now, obviously because my backdrop takes up a little bit of room, uh, it, this is going to be a little bit larger than I need. And I, you definitely want it a little bit larger instead of a little bit too small. Because when it's a little bit larger, it can curve up and it'll prevent any of your soil and stuff from falling down into the hydro balls. Whereas if it's a little bit too small, all around the perimeter, you're going to get soil and, and other things past the hydro ball layer. So we're going to go right there. Next thing, it's going to be some horticulture charcoal. And we'll include this also down in the description so you can get some. I, I got this off Amazon myself and, and we don't need a real thick layer of this. But I'm just going to put it here on top of, of the screen and I'm going to use my hand because I love it when my hand turns black. I told you. So this is mostly just nice because it's going to uh, prevent a lot of bacteria and mold growth from occurring. It's just going to be a filter medium. It's nice. Might put a little more in there. Smells delightful too. Smells like I just had a campfire. And that actually gets us caught up to basically where we would be if we weren't putting this, this drainage layer in there, which is putting in our bedding. And this is the Josh's Frogs bio bedding. This is my first time using it and I'm really excited 
to really just get my hands in there and feel what it feels like. As always, I'll be using my handy dandy skeleton tool to cut the box or the bag open. So let's see here. We'll put a link to that in the description too. Pour a little of that in there. This is gonna be where your plants are gonna live, so make sure it's deep enough for the roots of your plants to exist in here. Mix it up a little though, since there do seem to be different components to it. And just looking at it right now, it's got some horticulture charcoal in it. So if you didn't wanna add your own horticulture charcoal and you just wanted to use Josh's Frog's bio bedding, I think you'd be happy as a clam. So I added my own horticulture char charcoal, but they looks like this is sort of an all-in-one. Uh, it's got wood chips. It's got a lot of really good stuff in here. This is really a very naturalistic sort of soil. I like Josh's frogs. They're just a good company. I've been I've been buying stuff from them for years, and you know they've always just been really solid. And I was excited when we were at Tinley this last time. Well, my first time ever at Tinley. I, I got to meet Josh's frogs. And I really like we sought them out because I wanted to meet those people that I'd been dealing with for all these years and they were just great. They're just great, great folks. You know, it's a great company. The people that work there are genuinely excited about what they do. They have a lot of knowledge and they work hard to create products that we genuinely are gonna use and we're gonna need and we're gonna enjoy. So this, this is exciting. This is neat. This is their 10 quarts, and it looks like 10 quarts is about the perfect amount for one square foot of this tank. So, you know, if you're building one bigger, maybe get two of these bags. They sent us two bags, but I think one is gonna be plenty for this build. In fact, I'm just gonna empty a lot of the rest of it in here. There we go. Now it does, it has lots of different layers and so it's gonna need to be mixed up a little bit, but I'm not worried about that because I was gonna mix it up anyway. Because we've got this bioactive booster and just reading the background, it says for a new setup, sprinkle bioactive booster on the surface of your substrate and gently stir the substrate to mix it throughout. And it sounds like we need to use one shake per square foot. So, all right. I don't know if it's a metric shake or a standard shake. Got it? I think that was, I think that was a, a full on traditional Josh's Frog shake. Okay, so we'll go ahead and mix that up. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Really cool, there's a lot of different things going on in this substrate and I really like it. Right now with our combo meter, This is a combination. I think it's a hygrometer and a thermometer, so it's gonna give us temperature and humidity readings. And it runs on batteries, which is nice, and it's got a probe. In fact, that probe could be really handy. Is that you've got a, this is the humidity probe, and you make sure that you stick that in a place. I'm gonna put this in later, but I'll just talk you through it right now. You're gonna, you're gonna stick this probe in a place so that it can record especially the, well, the air temperature and the humidity level, so it's gonna be up above the soil. And then this, I think you can actually have hooked up outside of the enclosure, uh, or, or inside probably, but outside would probably be the safest. And, and that way, oh, look at that. Oh, brilliant. Okay, this is even cooler than I knew. All right, so with this combination hygrometer thermometer, on your Exoterra lid, there is a slot up here and it slides on that slot, which is the slickest darn thing I've ever seen in my life. And then you just open up these sliders just a little bit and where there's one of the spaces available and you'll run that right through that first hole and that's where you'll put your, your probe. Brilliant, love it, love it. So I'm gonna leave that on the lid, I'll install that later. So this is another little add-on that I'm gonna do. 
I, uh, I really, really like this substrate and I'm excited about it. And something I'm going to add just to the surface of it is just a little bit of exoterra uh, forest moss. I really like this exoterra forest moss. A block like this includes like three little bricks and they blow up to be huge. This is half of one of the little bricks and it's a huge amount of moss. So I'm going to add this to the top. Again, this is, this is optional, but this is just something I really liked. Okay, let's see here, break it up a little. It's just a little sphagnum. You always want to check really anything you're putting into your enclosures to make sure there's no plastic or anything that could be a problem for your animals, but I haven't really had that problem with this forest moss. It's good stuff. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is gonna be a beautiful little tank. I really like this stuff with frogs just because it keeps them away from the soil a little bit so it doesn't stick to them. And it's just pretty. Okay, here we go. So now we're gonna add our first animals. And the first animals I'm gonna add to this tank are going to be our dwarf isopods. And these came to us from Josh's frogs. And they're amazing, I love dwarf isopods. They've got them sealed up nicely for us. It's not really bioactive if you don't have your cleanup crew in there. It's just a tank that's hard to clean. So I'm gonna peel back the moss just a little bit so these guys can get down into the soil. And this is such a great cup. You definitely wanna have enough of them in here that they're able to establish a little colony. And, and the nice thing too is once, once you have one tank going, uh, you can pretty much just grab a little bit of soil out of that tank and you can establish a new colony in other tanks. In fact, I'm gonna do the whole cup. Aha. There you go, guys. Enjoy. Let's see, I'll cover them back up. Expose a different corner. We'll do this back corner. Because now we're going to put our springtails in here. Springtails are cool little hexapods. Seems like sometimes people classify them as insects and sometimes not. They're very, very close relatives of the insects at the very least. And they're really cool. They've got this little appendage off of the back of their abdomen that they can use to catapult themselves into the air. And that's why they're called springtails. And uh, they're wonderful. I, I love Columbola. So... In fact, if you forget that they're called Columbola, it says temperate springtail Columbola culture. So I'm actually probably not going to use this whole culture right now because it is loaded. Right? They did not shortchange me on springtails at all. And I'm thrilled. Oh my goodness, they are going. Be free, little ones. I'm actually not even going to use this whole cup right now. I'll use these to start a few more enclosures as well. And now that our cleanup crew is ready to go, and installed. I'm gonna add one of these. This is their cleanup crew cuisine from Josh's Frogs. It sounds like I just take one of these and I just put it on the surface. And uh, you know, just the ambient humidity in the enclosure will kind of cause that to swell up and it should be covered in happy cleanup crew in no time. So we'll close the doors on this for a minute because our last steps we're gonna install our light fixture and our bamboo. Okay, so this bamboo is obviously considerably taller than the tank. These are 24 inch pieces of bamboo. This is an 18 inch tank. And that's kind of nice because it allows you to cut them down to exactly the length that you want them. And, and originally I, I placed them in kind of like this and I'm realizing now I've got so much soil that I've almost got enough to go, to cut these right in half and have twice as much. Um, but I think I'm still going to do that one at an angle. I like that. And, and I'll cut these other two. And so I'll have some shorter ones and some longer ones. And we'll just, we'll just play with it a little. But it should be a lot of fun. We've chopped our bamboo to just how we want it. And now we get to play. So I'm going to stick that one in there. That's my cross, my cross beam. Let's see here. This one has a big crack. I definitely want to stick it where... I can see them peeking out of there. And I cut these a little bit so that I could compact the soil and they would stick right in. Okay, and I, this is where I stuck my columbola. They've got a lot of soft medium. 
Okay, let's see here. And now I got all these extra pieces that I just get to play with. I think first thing though, now that I got my bamboo where I want it, is I'm gonna put my plants in where I want them. So I'm gonna need to take those out from being in with the geckos. Oh, they're on the plants. They are so cute. All right, guys. All right, so I'm gonna put these plants. Josh's frog sent us in here. Okay, so I'm thinking this one, since it's a more vertical grower, I'll put it in the back. Be right here. Okay, now we'll do our philodendron. Or maybe right kind of in this big gap right here, I think. Actually, now that I think about it too, this is a plant that might grow up the back eventually, which would be pretty cool. But we'll cross that bridge later. For now, I think right here. All right, so there's our two plants. And now, we've got some more bamboo we can situate as we see fit. I kind of like it. Now we'll just go ahead and throw the lid on. That's the one where it was really important that I filled that gap. Clear this out. One more thing we have to do before we make that lid a permanent fixture. Just make sure we get this probe installed. Okay, we'll get that lid on top. Away we go. There it is. Well, this is gonna be our new enclosure for our neon day geckos. Pretty exciting stuff. Thank you again to everyone at Josh's Frogs for making this possible. We are so excited about this enclosure. We're excited about these geckos and we're excited to be working with you guys because you are a wonderful company and we love standing by you. When you go to Josh's Frogs to get your neon day geckos and all the stuff that you need, we've actually got a coupon code down in the description that'll save you 15%. And uh, that's awesome. I am so excited about that. So. If you want to save 15%, use coupon code down in the description. That's awesome. I'm going to use it. As always, like and subscribe. We hope to see you real soon. I cut it to approximately one foot by one foot by one foot. I cut it to approximately one foot by one foot because this is square and it's flat. It's not a cube. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>